time to say. That's okay. Um, <laughs> I'm laughing. I'm in the fucking hey, welcome back, Josh. Why are you laughing? Immediately when you said one, I remembered that that okay. message you why, said. Why are you like this? What, so no, me- when you were like, it's that oh, time again, is it harder shit? And then you, <laughs> and then after you did it, you go, ah, what was that? What the fuck was that? <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> hey, hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Chud Talk. And Chud Talk is a segment of episodes that are not part of our normal conversations or topics. So like right now we're discussing the refranchising topic, but we're taking breaks from that to just basically ramble and chat about shit that doesn't really matter. And therefore be Chud Talk, which Chud is talk. a cannibalistic humanoid <laughs> underground dweller, aka the four of us. Chud is a four little word. I uh, yeah yeah w- which letter are I'm we? the C <laughs> yeah yeah I'm the C yeah Blake's the C yeah you're I'm the, the H what <laughs> yeah you're the humanoid <laughs> Josh is like I guess you're either underground or dweller yeah I'm just the dweller I just dwell. <laughs> so I'm underground yeah then. you're underground <laughs> cool okay um in this topic today we're gonna be talking about a horror movie that Josh wanted to talk to us about last time but none of us saw it but me Patrick and Ryan just watched it and it is talk to me and. Uh, and boy, is it top notch! And boy, oh, how, <laughs> uh, boy, howdy, do I sure want to talk about it? Um, so I guess we'll just go around and like give our opinions about a movie that I don't think was very good. Should Should I go first? Coming yes, up? absolutely, okay. right. absolutely. Let's hear Josh's so, thoughts. Since I know a little bit about the movie, um, first of all, it's it's been pretty well received in terms of audience and like critically. Um, it. A24, right? Yes, absolutely. Um, Look at it. It had a budget of like four million. And there's a weird animal in it. It's made. It's made by um, some. They started off doing YouTube. I don't know if they have done any shorts or worked on any other shorts, uh, but the YouTube channels Rocka Rocka or whatever. Shut up. Yeah, them. Um, they <laughs> I, I, in terms of the quality and the budget and everything. The budget's actually pretty decent. It's not. It's a lower budget, but it's within Hollywood standard. What do what do you know the number? Four million. It's oh, a it's a low. That's two skimmerings. <laughs> no no no, that's box office. No, that's what I'm saying you can make two skimmerings, get the no, money, no, no. and then take that money to make talk to me because skimmerings made two million. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! I thought you were saying budget. <laughs> no, 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 I, I get no, like yeah, you make two, two revenues yeah. of yeah, skin you, take, you make two skin rings, take the money, yes. make that money, and then you go okay. and make talk to me. And you make a talk to me. And then you make four, then you make two talk to me's, get eight million. See, this is Holy some advanced shit. Blake math right yeah. here. This is how Blake does math. Once you have eight million, you know what you can make? But, well, I don't know, million. I, I mean, anyway, I wanted, to go home. I wanted to say that stuff because I have a feeling you three didn't like it. But I want the audience I'm to feel vindicated. Fence. So stop vomiting. So in terms of <laughs> professional. the movie, I'm trying to think back because it was a while back when I saw it. I saw it in theaters. Um, I thought there was definitely some of the. It's difficult because with movies like this, like Insidious, everyone was like, "This movie is the greatest fucking movie ever made. I can't believe it. It's amazing. It's so good. It's the scariest movie." And I watched it. I'm like, "What the hell is this?" The, the <laughs> legs are someone holding two props going like, yeah walking. walking around <laughs> and i and then the kid i was thrown off because the kid was like awful like the movie was very clearly lower mm. budget and it is a lower budget horror movie but like the kid when he's got this get these chains you gotta get these chains off me when he's in like the lipstick demon or whatever's lair i love the lipstick demon um but anyway <laughs> it reminded me of that yeah i connected with it yeah <laughs> it reminded me of that movie going in where people are like this is amazing but it's kind of more marketing and so i lowered my expectations um going in it was pretty clear the directing was pretty good and it was pretty unique um to like do a quick summary before I really get into my part of it, um, the writing left some to be desired, and yes. it probably <laughs> goes with a bit of the directing as well because this is the first time they're directing a Hollywood level movie, which I hate saying Hollywood because they're Australian. Like who the fuck is it? Who who cares about Australia? They're their own thing. Dude. <laughs> wow, oh, John! <laughs> Wait, Christ. Australia? I meant Hollywood. <laughs> who cares about Hollywood when you're in Australia? You don't have that. I see. Okay, I okay, see what yeah, you're saying. Yeah. That's different. You, you, you <laughs> who cares about Australia? <laughs> I have dyslexia. He said that so much. Yeah, yeah. Australia, who cares? No, no, it's not. 
Who I, gives I, yeah, a yeah, fuck? We all, okay, we yeah, all yeah, know yeah. what you meant. Anyway, um, twice. <laughs> it's stupid. I don't know. It feels weird saying that, but um, I thought the a lot of the actors did a pretty good job. Well, a, a good amount of the actors did a really solid job. Yeah, where yeah, I agree with that. The main actress I thought was great. Yeah, um, I thought the little brother was pretty good. The like. <laughs> The yeah, parts of the movie really where he well. wasn't even like a <laughs> Yeah, um, he hates shit really well. I, I thought all of the actors did a pretty decent job acting, but yeah. it was definitely some of the writing and maybe a lack of maybe directional knowledge to be able to correct things to get it to like a standard spit on the table. But uh, <laughs> I mean, you could tell they did exactly what they were supposed to do or <laughs> yeah, what they were being yeah. directed to do. Exactly, and it can be hard. So it wasn't their fault fault if anything came off weird coming from like making movies that are pretty low budget and like how low budget would you say our 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 movies are um so i got like five bucks bucks. (laughs) no no how much did you spend on the props and the that's um, how much was the starbucks uh the starbucks (laughs) was like 20 bucks um i think the whole costume for the whaler i think was like 150 Okay. I think. Well, the budget for Bloom was 400 Damn. So like, we're dealing in oh. pretty small. But, like, what I mean in that regards, because I don't want to compare my stuff to this, because this yeah. was actually, you know, it's 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 pretty good. Yeah. What the fuck am I saying? <laughs> what, what, I don't know. <laughs> what am I talking about? No, I'm like, I'm like, oh, yeah, my stuff I'm comparing, like, oh, you it's know, fine. as me as a director comparing it to this movie that's, like, eight $4 million budget <laughs> as professional actors. Why not? But, you know. You know. Like Wait, are you saying I'm not a professional? Like, what the fuck am I right. talking about? Well, because, I don't know, it seems weird. I guess what I mean nah. to say is I, I think in a lot of those circumstances, because I've run into it too, where you write the script and you're like, oh, that'll sound cool. Mm-hmm. And then you get there and they say it and you're like, something doesn't sound this right This isn't here, a read-write, right? But I don't quite know how to correct that or how to work with the actors and stuff on how to I, correct it. And I then told later you. that night you look in the mirror like, you fucking fraud. <laughs> yeah, I do that every <laughs> night. You lipstick who's a whore. You're a whore. <laughs> no, I totally understand what you're saying because like, there's a difference between writing dialogue and the dialogue that is actually between humans. Because, mm-hmm. like, for instance, I mean, you guys know I watched so many fucking movies. Too many. What? Not too many. Not <laughs> enough. Well, more um, than us. Yeah, more than you guys. <laughs> but there's so much dialogue that has come my way that I've listened to. And there's difference between, you know, writing good dialogue or even just letting your actors kind of just talk a little bit. Mm-hmm. Or put, like, because you can write someone with dialogue and it comes out of someone's mouth. It doesn't match the person. Like, for instance... Fucking, I don't give a shit. Mark Wahlberg, you can hunt me down all you want. I don't fucking think you're... I don't think you sound smart in Transformers. You're supposed to be a fucking mechanic Iron Man, and there's a part where he's rambling math and science. Doesn't sound right. And for some reason, it's because it's Mark Wahlberg, and he just is, like, <laughs> rambling gibberish. And I was like, I understand that you... But also, it's Michael Bay. Michael Bay can't write fucking dialogue. Sorry. Hot, hot take. He said, wait, guys, guys. A-, a squared plus B squared equals C squared. Did you see your eyeball pop out of your head. Did Michael <laughs> Bay write that though? Uh, probably. No, I, I, I bet he's got a different writer on. Okay, that. but either way, there's just like parts where it's like you can tell. There's like certain things that you're like, man, this character is supposed to be. For instance, like say you have like a tough guy, right? But then he has all this tough guy dialogue, and you're like, I don't believe him to be that guy. Or like you know, they, a guy says something witty, and you're like, I don't think that guy's like smart. Like yeah. for instance. I'll throw myself under the bus. I don't think I'm a very smart person. I don't think I... I have a lot of... I have a lot of speech I problems. I just said, fuck Australia. When I meant to say <laughs> fuck Hollywood. Like, yeah. like, for instance, like, wow, one time in high school, uh, I'm not going to say the person's name, but I was like, yo, man, I, I think I could play Scarecrow in the Batman movies. And he's like, no, dude, you're too hyperactive. And I was like, well, one thing, there's acting. Uh, I don't think Killian Murphy's a fucking blank of wood. I think he right. can actually act. He has range. Yeah, yeah he's range. Mm. But I think, you know, you gotta know your actor, so, like, you can write dialogue, but you also gotta be able to write dialogue for the actor who's about to say the lines. And, to and also make it more fluid. Yeah, well, and that's part of the, the process in which, when you're making it, mm-hmm. I feel like you've gotta work with the people to be able to get the most authentic-sounding dialogue. And a lot of it, I think, was fine. There's only yeah. certain instances where i recognized it and i was like why why are they talking like this like when the kid comes in and the the one girl is like well i guess we're babysitting now yeah i'm like that's not something that an adult like a, a teenage like high schooler would say uh, especially because they're only 16 well and what, it was funny because when i watched that movie i was like this movie feels like 
people that are my age writing high school. Like, it does not yeah. feel like... Yes, it's because it's the kids talking about the cigarettes in the beginning. Yeah. And then one kid's like, what's Elvish? Well, and I was like, what? <laughs> even, even the way they Never use heard of their Lord of the Rings? Phones. Yeah, even the way like, they use their like, phones. I don't think that's how kids use phones. Yeah. Like, they're being really weird. And then I find out it's two people that are our age who yep. made the movie. Yeah. Which also, good job. Good job. Yeah. No, but I totally agree with you because it's like... I, I go back and I reread some scripts or whatever that I write or whatever, but there's there's a big difference between like how I write certain dialogue now versus how I wrote in the back, and it's like you I have still to suck at it. Yeah, I still <laughs> suck at it. Notice how most of my movies don't have dialogue. The, the Force <laughs> Christ Christ Wolf, it. Force Christ Wolf, you don't say a word. Awesome. <laughs> I'm so good at that. I'm so good at that. But it's like you got to you got to make sure that what your characters are saying fit the character that is saying it, and you're not just making a character state dialogue. For instance, I recently just watched Batman Forever. There are moments where Val Kilmer is just stating something off, like, a piece of paper. <laughs> it's so bad. It's very flat. And he's just, like, he's, like, he's, like, you could have been killed tonight. And I was, like, what? why are you, you're, like, a good actor, but it was so weird because it was hit and miss. There was parts where he was acting, there was other parts where he's, like, clearly, it, it makes me feel like the piece of paper is in front of him, like a prompter, and he's, like, I am now being the news reporter for Batman. And I'm like, why are you talking like that? And I'm just like, you gotta... And that's like one thing I don't understand when people are like, oh, hey, I there's no ad-libbing in my movies. You can't do any of that. I'm like, yo, if you, some people are bad at writing dialogue. And, you know, for instance... Well, I know some dialogue doesn't work for actors. That's true. Actors. And, and some actors... And also, sometimes people write dialogue that don't make no goddamn sense. Yeah, it makes sense in your head, but then when you're actually acting... It might even make sense on paper, too. Yeah, you know, like, oh yeah, this sentence makes yeah. sense. And then someone says it, and you're like, why doesn't that sound good? It's like, well, because you didn't do right English or yeah, something? You know like, what I, I do? I get my script, and I read it out loud after I do it. Yeah. And I make adjustments based on reading it out loud. Because That's very it sounds good. Sounds different than when you write it. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um, but my dialogue is written very different than my actual text. So, like in my scripts, the dialogue that's written for characters is not proper English; it's spoken English, mm -hmm. and then all of the actual text is proper English. But anyway, going past that, should I give like my full review, or should I give like my kind of review of what I thought about the movie and its scenes, but not go super in depth into everything, including my theories. It's a chud talk, Josh. Do you want to Yeah, yeah like, 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 This check. is a chud talk. It's <laughs> just like two hours Josh, later, he's still like, talking. Be a little bit different. <laughs> okay, but just to finish up really yeah, yeah. quick, I can tell. You know, for instance, there's the whole unfortunate cliche of high school movies, but it's a bunch of like 30 year olds playing high schoolers. And just like in this movie, there's a little dialogue that's a little dated or not like out of touch and they're like oh what are we babysitting tonight yeah i'm like, I'm like i would never have said that if a 14 year old showed up somewhere i'm like oh cool you're here i'm like i'm only two years older than you and like again all those kids would be like 16 i think i don't remember 16 17 yeah, yeah but, and i'm like but, one of them was 30 but the, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he looked like he was yeah, 30 all for the sure. other kids are like oh man i'm smoking cigarettes these are real cigarettes oh i'm so cool i'm so partying and he's like oh he's speaking <laughs> elvish he's like what's elvish and i was like so do people just not understand how kids are? Like, kids know stuff. You're an adult, and especially yeah. the... It's always different. It's like that movie Grim Cuddy that we watched with uh, oh, Grim, oh, Grim, Grim again. That. What did you call him? Cut again? I can't Cuddy, it was, no, no, it was, Cuddy uh, McGee? Yeah, Cuddy McGee. Cuddy okay. McGee? Yeah, because I think you were thinking of Skin Again. Right? Yes, I, I was thinking of Skin Again. But, uh, <laughs> but Cuddy McGee, the Grim Cutter, um, the Cut McGinn, or, um, you know, you, you write these dialogues or whatever for high schoolers, and unfortunately, a lot of times, you can be like, Dude, nobody fucking talks like this. Nobody nobody in high school talks like this. Or just this. as the writer, you can be so out of touch. So of, out of touch. Yeah. Do you not know a kid? Yeah. Like, that's the thing. I'm like, well, do you not just go, go talk to a kid? No. <laughs> I know what to do. Goes to a high school as a 30-year-old and starts talking to high schoolers. Not a good idea. <laughs> like in Ma. Just like in Ma! <laughs> yeah, yeah I know okay. a kid. But, like, there's, there's at least a way where you can be, like... For instance... You can let hold on, the I, younger people... I... I I have a really what good... What do you mean, younger people? Babies! <laughs> the actors who you got to play Yeah, role. just have like them talk. 25, 26-year-olds? I don't know. Um, I don't there's a movie well, yeah. called uh, Go uh, Good Boys, which I'm pretty sure is... No, not Good Boys. It's called, like, the 90s or the 1990s or whatever. It's by Jonah it's Hill. Oh, it's the Good Boys. It's the, 19, it's the 90s. The 90s. Yeah. So there's a part where Jonah Hill is, like, talking to 
somebody else part of the movie, and he's like, I don't know, maybe I should take this dialogue out, or maybe I should have these characters talk in a certain way. And the guy straight up was like, when you were this age, would you have that conversation? He's like, well, no. He goes, then don't put it. Yeah. If, it if it's not something you would do at that age, don't add it, because now you as an adult would put that. Like, you have to let your kids be kids. Like, the new Team and Team movie, the new animated one, there were parts where they would just let the four kids talk, and then just record and animate some stuff. And I'm like, that's genuine because you get, like, how actual kids are acting and talking and teenagers and doing something and instead of trying to, like, make your teenagers be a way that you think teenagers are. I don't it's know about of... that. Is there also turtles? <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. And also <laughs> mutants that's, and ninjas. That's kind of the way I... There's... I've seen a couple of videos on, like, how Spielberg and they directed, like, the Goonies. The Spielberg didn't direct the Goonies, but yes, how did. they directed the kids. and he, I feel like he kind of shadow did, but... The way that he lets, like, he, the kids, I felt like, had a big part in coming up with the dialogue and such for mm -hmm. those roles. But anyway, I feel like I want to, I can do my review, I don't want to take too long, but... It's only been 15 minutes. But... <laughs> but... Well, hold on, speaking of the Goonies, okay. do you think that um, the kid made up the Truffle Shuffle himself? No. No, I think that was a... Uh, uh, you think that was directed? I think that was a pervert. Choreographed? I think a pervert. Lift up your shirt and shake your stomach shake her, around. Shake her well, it was also the 80s. Like a, In the 80s, you could basically you like make a movie about anything. Like They drowned that kid in Jaws. They didn't give a shit. <laughs> they threw birds at someone. Like I don't know, back then, they didn't give a flying hell. <clears throat> but, <laughs> so, that's the acting. But also, all of the actors, you know, given... The movie was pretty well funded, which is, you know, they did a lot of the funding, which is very impressive. Um, but given everything that they had and what the, this is technically their first directed narrative movie, I believe. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure a lot of the actors were probably newer. Given all of that, everyone did a very good We looked job. into that. Not that new. No, they they did. They, some they were stuff. pretty experienced, actually. I think I think a good portion of them had at least like a couple things under their belt. Yeah, Not big in stuff. Feature length or in um, shorts, because well, like TV different. series. So the I think the, I think the main one was yeah. like in a movie, yeah. or two, and then some TV series. Well, but she was also the best. The best, yes. Right. Hey, yeah. don't don't forget about the uh, the mom. Yeah, the mom. The mom killed the witch king of Agmar. <laughs> <laughs> Miranda Otto. I was losing my shit. Because she's like, I'm not a man. And then she stabbed him in the face. And he was like... <laughs> I, he didn't talk to me? I don't remember that. Yeah, you remember that part where they like, talk to me. And then they had the hand. And then um, and then, and then, then uh, Sauron's eye came out because the hand was actually the ring. And then a hobbit was like, Mr. Frodo, well, I just want to go back to the Shire. And then they looked over and Riley was like, bashing his fucking head into the wall. And Sam Samwise Grandview was like, holy shit, Frodo! I think that kid's fucked! And then Gandalf was like, "You shall not talk to me." I remember that. Uh, and then, um, <laughs> and then Christopher Lee was like, "This is what a dying man sounds like." Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then the uh, the kangaroo turned into an eagle, and Gandalf was like, "Kangaroo, you fool." <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyways, well, let me let me as Mia stabs him. But in yeah, the all back. the, the, the <laughs> actors and the actresses <laughs> that were the main cast. Haven't really been in much, so... But we were talking about that earlier, me and Ryan and Patrick. That the acting, I had no problem with most of it. I think the acting was decent. I think the... I think the I, I have a hard time better. actually thinking of an example of, like, I thought it was bad acting. Specifically like, that first yeah. scene, I would say, where they were, like, talking about cigarettes. I'm like, oh my god, this is Yes, awesome. But that felt more like writing that was to both. me. Uh, uh, really? Yeah. But, I mean, you know, to be honest, bad I think writing. it was really just... The one kid, the 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 mullet kid, oh, the yeah. mullet kid, yeah. okay, they really <laughs> kind of oh, okay. But uh -huh. not not that they're not that they were terrible. It was just a rough scene. It was. Yeah, it, it felt. They should just cut that scene. Well, to be honest, like I didn't think that needed to be there. Besides that, I guess what I mean to say is we're being, I'm I'm being at least kind of critical in critical. terms of the writing. I thought most of it was pretty good because except for those scenes and a few of the scenes in the beginning, yeah, I didn't really notice it. Um, I think the cinematography was pretty cool. Um. A lot of it, you know, is very modern. I felt cinematography, but it was it was all pretty well done. There were some scenes that um, I thought were very clever. There were some cool camera movements with like the possession scenes. I enjoyed that. Um, I there was one thing I give it huge props for is specifically, you know, it is a funny scene, the foot scene. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but when that scene is happening. 
It's like, uncomfortable. Before it happens, you're like, holy shit, this is like kind of spooky. Yeah. And when I watched the movie, it didn't really scare me. But that whole week, I was like scared of the dark a little bit. Mm, yeah, really? And, <laughs> yeah, and I don't know what it was because like the, the drowned lady didn't scare me. Mm-hmm. And but it was just the way it was specifically, which is big props, the way that that scene was shot. None of the movie scared me except for that one scene got me, and they did a good job. And no, yeah, I get you, Blake. You also mentioned it earlier. It's the creepy movement yeah. behind it too. I, I yes. think when it's choreographed well, to me, I, yeah, you know, or sorry, to me, it was all the camera angle and the light. Yeah, okay. Because the way yeah, that no, the absolutely. camera moved, and you're looking for something, but then. The thing that I hate about horror movies is a lot of times when there's a noise or you think you see something, it's nothing. But in this, you think you see something and it is something. Yep. Yeah, I really it thought... Was. So the scene that we're describing is a part where she's in her room, she's looking around and there's obviously some noises or something happening and she looks over to the corner of her room. Um, and you think you see something. And you, that was the thing. Yes, because there was like we two sure. shiny things. I was like, are those eyeballs? Yeah. And then Patrick made the joke that they were nipples. <laughs> <laughs> Which is pretty funny. But then the camera, in my personal... Opinion. I don't think the camera should have cut in closer. I think it should have stayed that far away because yeah, then there's a person in the room and she moves forward. And I was like, oh shit, there's actually. I thought what they yeah. were going to do is the cliche, like, oh, you think there's something there. It's not really like a light shines out. You see, it's like a bunch of clothes crumpled yeah. up. But I thought something was going to happen. But I was like, oh yeah, someone's moving in the darkness. I always thought that was cool looking. Yeah. I think it, I think that's always and it like. It didn't go away to it. Like, it didn't go away. Because mm-hmm. I really hate when they do shit like that and it's like short or it's nothing or it's like, oh, big dumb girl! <laughs> I don't care! Or. So we're gonna say. Oh yeah, well, she like because what they could have done is like she like creepily walks forward, yeah, and then she disappears beneath the bed, and all of a sudden, bam, right in your face, yeah. Because I'm like, that's uh, cheap. There's probably a couple of ways you could have done that scene too, because like <laughs> I was also thinking like instead of zooming in or, or focusing like that, you could have left the camera where it was and then let the person come in yes, and ex- focus. Exactly, in, I think yeah. that would have been better if they kept it. I liked was. the way it moved. Really? Yeah, I think the, the camera, camera. Yeah, I think the camera, like, kind of slowly moving once you realize the character is there. I liked that. Well, no, I I like that too. My problem is, is like, because it's 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 at a certain distance, and then it cuts it cuts to Mia, mm-hmm. and when it cuts back, it's closer. Oh, okay. Yeah. I kind of wish it stayed oh, fair, further fair. back. Yeah, yeah. I, so yeah, way, that's how I when done she it. is like emerging from the shadows, it's a little more like. Oh, shit, because when it zoomed in, I was like, oh, I see what we're but looking at now. I guess yeah. still what I would say here is I, I agree I probably would have done it wider, but um, I would say that's kind of an artistic decision. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I still course. felt it was still effective. No, it, it still was. That I scene know. still got me because that's the weird thing of horror movies. Is all it takes is one scene. If your movie sucks, which this didn't, I to <laughs> me, this movie didn't suck. But if your movie sucks, but you get me once, you just made a good horror movie. If your movie's pretty decent, but you don't scare me, then I'm going to forget about it. Skin and Marine. Uh. Well, so <laughs> I still think about Skin and Marine. Yeah. And I, that is a whole thing. I went in a whole rabbit trail about Skin and Marine that we should probably talk about at some point because okay. I think it's a very interesting movie. We can um, talk about it after this. Um, I'd be down, but okay. Um, oh, hold on. The way you said it's a very interesting movie kind of scares me because you said it in a way that made you kind of sound like you liked it. No. Okay, good. I, I, so <laughs> don't you ever say anything about Skin, it again. Skin and Marink is one of the most... I don't want to go into don't it Don't spoil right it now, too much, yeah. But it's, yeah. it's one of the most interesting like modern horror movies because it being made is insane. <laughs> it being made in, in It's in general, literally insane. It getting a release is crazy. And the way that it's divided fans, I've never... Whenever people are like, oh, this movie, you either hate it or you love it. And I'm like, I've never seen that. It's always like, I'm like, oh, I can kind of see both sides. I don't understand. I, I don't hate. either. People are saying how scary it is, and I see nothing. Yeah, yeah and there's so, nothing. That, the movie's literally nothing. I've, I've watched like video, but people are scared. But that means that they succeeded. If people, no, are, no, but if people, no, you're no, all, right, all right, stop this. Let's go. Let's not talk about Skin Marine right now. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> So getting off of that, because that's a whole thing. We <laughs> should talk about Skin Marine because next think it's time, yeah. But well, next time, this one. Okay, so. That, I liked that scene. I thought that scene was scary. I want to also add, this is common in horror movies. Like, we just locked, watched Ma, mm-hmm. which had the stupidest <laughs> characters I've ever seen. They kept going, we're going to call the cops! And they then not calling. The cops. <laughs> and then they called it, the cops show up at the end, and I was like, oh my god, it's them! And he goes, ma'am, there's some letter in your yard. And then she, like, shoots him. Spoilers. 
Um, <laughs> anyway. But the, also, they kept being like, yo, guys, don't go to Ma's house. Next scene, 20 yeah, kids yeah, are like, like three or four times, they're yeah. like, stop going to Ma's like, house. Why, why, why are you here? It's Jazz's birthday, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, like, the characters in Talk to Me made all of the stupidest decisions. Like, they were really, really dumb. Yeah. And they kept making stupid decisions consistently. Um, there's also a lot of weird stuff, like, uh, with the kangaroo, when it's like... <laughs> I didn't get that at all. Around. No, I didn't. And the kid was like, follow. you've got to put it out of its misery. And she's like, okay, gets in her car. It's like, what are you going to do? Do burnouts on its court? <laughs> yeah, she's going to run it over. I can't think But then of... she doesn't. No, then she but doesn't. Does... Oh. Is that something someone would do? Like, oh my god, I gotta put maybe this in Australia. It's in? Yeah, I don't know. That'd be weird. Like, I feel like okay, maybe I'm a psychopath, but I'd be like, <laughs> if this animal is gonna die, I'm not gonna run it over. Like, I feel like I would, I feel like I would have to kill it and be there. This was with something it. I was yeah. curious about. It's yeah. like Australia, like one of those places where you would just carry around a gun or a Bowie knife <laughs> yeah, or something. Think, like... No, uh, guns are banned. <laughs> are in Australia? In Australia, are they? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. That's called sure. Jack. <laughs> they end all their disagreements with fist fighting and fucking after that and... emu war like yeah, yeah, they yeah. <laughs> but anyway uh, that scene I thought was odd because I was like you're gonna run it over but then she didn't she left and then yeah. the kid was like <sighs> and I was like calm down like, like, why don't you do something about yeah. it Riley weird but yeah I thought that scene was a little odd but that's also creative dis- differences I would say um, later on it did some- I still think that she made a lot of stupid decisions but I also thought that's- it was interesting because I could tell that the creators of the movie were influenced by a lot of different genres because I got a little bit of like a Ouija board type movie. Absolutely, because yeah, essentially the was... movie boiled down to its <laughs> its element. It's a Ouija board movie. Yeah, because there were like so many tropes from Ouija board movies in this one. Like you have to blow out the candle to to. You end have to it say all. goodbye. Because that's in a yeah. Ouija, you have to summon it to a certain Ouija way. Movies. It's like you always have to say goodbye. Oh, because mm-hmm. that's what happened in that one movie. You have to like you just you have to like say certain things to yeah. get it to possess you. Let it in. Let me. Of course, it never talk get inside. Oh, yeah, well, yeah get, no, uh, <laughs> talk to me. Man, I me. let you in. Oh, I let you in. Get in me. <laughs> <laughs> to add though, on top of that, coolest Ouija board movie I've seen. The fucking hand is so cool. I will. Oh, I, I want but have that. Have you seen Ouija? There's an awesome headbang death scene. Yes, I yes, watched. It's like, so. Oh my oh, god! Times it in a is row. it like Deadly Friend? Where she like ah? And then they throw the basketball. And Almost. Her head it's, it's it's like maybe equal to she, that. She she lifts up in the air, hits the sink, and goes like bonk. And it Whoa. explodes? No. No, oh, but it's bunk. just the sound is hilarious. It's like literally donk, and she just falls And we ground. put it on repeat, so it's just like donk, donk, <laughs> I feel like he's laughing like anyway. psychos. <laughs> oh my god, but no, I, I do agree. I like the hand prop. I thought it was cool yeah. as shit. Yeah. I love the hand. If I could get that just as like a... Like a little, just I make just it. want to make one. Yeah, just yeah. make one. But it, it, it's cool. I love the hand. I think the hand's really cool. Um, I also was getting like weird coming of age type like stuff, like with the drugs and like the yeah. weird romance stuff, yeah. which I I usually don't like coming of age stories because it's appealing to something I didn't experience. Yeah, you never came. Like, no, the ones where they're like, <laughs> I've got to smoke weed and all the like, like oh, that makes me sound so lame. No, they're like, I've got to like do fucking drugs dark. And, shit. <laughs> and I'm just like, I don't know. It just doesn't really work for me because they, that's like all coming of age movies. Um, but this one's also spoilers. It's a metaphor for addiction, which was also, I mm-hmm. felt very heavy, not heavy handed, but it was pretty, it's obvious. very obvious. Yeah. 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 Was pretty, which is not, that's not a problem. No, um, I think, I think it did. I think it did, it did a good job. I think it could have had more focus. On that, yeah, because there was a few parts where her friends. That's tricky. Mom, I feel like because yeah. I feel like you can overdo it For pretty sure. quickly too. I think I think to do it better, they needed one more scene with Mia getting on the hand and talking to like her mom. Just do one more scene because like I like the scene where like you know she has it and she takes it and she does whatever. And I'm like, if you did like maybe one more scene of like showing them like using the hand again, I think that might have sold it a little better. Like, oh, these kids are like kind of like, addicted to this shit. Yeah. Um, but I there's also the part where she's talking to her friend's mom, and her friend's mom's like, "Yo, you better not be doing any drugs tonight." And she goes, "Why? Well, I smoked weed one time." <laughs> and then she's like, "What did you give him? I know you did shit in your past." And she goes, "Oh my god, like I'm not a drug addict, mom. I only shook hands once." God, mom. <laughs> yeah. I I it's just shaking hands. Dude, and goes, the mom was like a 
Cr- like she like because she like killed the bitch. witch king of Agmar. <laughs> she's hardcore. Agmar. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Is that a goddamn little... witch king in there? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> it's the, yeah, it's the sign. But so <laughs> on that, clothes. what was it? Where was I? I don't know. You're right. right in front of talking us. about the the drugs don't coming of age, yeah. sort of stuff. Coming yeah. of age, we um, you don't smoke weed. You're a loser. You're a nerd. You're a square. You're yeah. Elf and Winners don't fucking use drugs. Bitches. You shaved your beard, your hair. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. Audience, you know, you <laughs> might have noticed. Yeah, it's right. to my audio my hair is listeners. Gone. Josh now no longer looks like a fucking random hobo. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe but, you've done this. So a few more things I want to touch on on the movie before my review is over, and I'll give my final verdict. Um. I hate hell scenes where all of these movies, they do like, hey, we're going to hell. It's going to be crazy. It's like, I, and I remember reading a thing about Event Horizon. Yes. Where it was talking about like, oh, you wouldn't believe it. The hell scene, it was going to be so crazy. They were like naked and covered in blood and like fucking each other. And there was like people getting eaten and babies getting eaten. And it was going to be nine minutes. I was like, first of all, that sounds awful. I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> Second of all, like, like that's with what we watch nowadays and what we experience with everything trying to push the envelope. That's nothing. And this I understand, and I don't want to see you push the envelope, but this hell scene was, like, the lamest I've ever seen. <laughs> so, there's, like, she, she's, like... Just an orgy she, pile. She, like, shakes the hand, and then she's, like... There's, like, a little kid, and she's, like, Hey, kid, um, I forget what Riley. I say. No, the other kid, which is, like, I can show you it. Oh, yeah, she's, like, I can show you it. Yeah, and then she's, like, oh, huh? And then they go to hell. Okay. And it's, like, a bunch of... I think they're naked. They are naked. Yeah, Yeah, it's like a bunch of naked, like, bloody people. Generic. And then in the corner, there's the lady eating the fetus. I'm like, oh, there she is. She's always there. Also, am I I wrong? Or was it all only, like, white people? I don't know. They're covered in blood. Uh, you no. mean like covered in makeup and blood? And yeah, yeah, but it was dark. I, I, just I, thought, think, right? I don't know. I just thought it would be kind of. I just thought it was kind of weird. Uh, like, unambiguous. I, saw, I, I was like, like why don't only well, white people go to hell? Yeah, well, only white people dumb enough to do this shit. Well, <laughs> well, hey, the main character. See, that's fake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah. But, very unrealistic. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, this scene, I hate it because it's like, why don't you give me? Don't do this. This is my weird take because I don't like gore. I don't like any of that stuff. But don't give me this, like, quick-cut, super-fast-paced bullshit hell where you're, like, trying to hide stuff. Because it's like, dude, we see horrible stuff all the time. Like, eating a fetus? Nothing. That's all you've got? But then I also understand <laughs> the kid. You bit. I don't know how old that actor was, but I get, I got the, I got the impression that they were younger. And so it made me actually laugh during that scene because when it showed him being tortured... They just had him in like a headlock. Yeah, like, <laughs> and they were yeah. just like holding yeah. him. Yeah, and he was like, ah! We got and they, were, they were all like punching him and yeah, stuff yeah. or whatever they were doing. And I just thought it was funny because I was like, oh, they're, they're not like really. Bully. <laughs> yeah, yeah they're so giving deep. him like wet willies and like swirlies. Wet willies all blood. Like, like, was a kid. Because like his character's 14, so, you know, probably the actor might be like. And he looked younger. Yeah, he yeah. looked young. But, uh, you know, his parents probably don't want to see him getting fucking like. Rubbed all well, over. They let him be in a rated R movie. Ah. Well, maybe okay. Maybe do it different. Maybe it's not a bunch of naked, bloody people. Make your own hell scene. I just thought. I'm not sure what I would want to see because no, I kind of agree with you because I see that hell scene every it's, time. It's in every hell yeah. scene because it's almost the exact same hell scene in Event Horizon. Yeah, it's, and it's every time. Hmm. Oh, I saw pictures of hell, and it's just a bunch of like naked bodies rubbing against each other with knives and blood and shit. But don't you want it to be a recognized like you want your audience to instantly recognize? Oh, this guy's experiencing hell. Is that hell though? That's how I I interpreted I think, it I think, immediately. That's I how I felt. I think there's a lot of ways to interpret it. I felt like that scene specifically, it felt like an homage to something like Event Horizon. I think they should have, like, a guy... <laughs> oh, boy. Here we go. <laughs> I don't Jesus like... I don't like, these yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like how know. Blake is holding his hand. They should have, like, a guy... Like, like, you know, like that thing? You use a twist to paste... So you just have okay. a guy just laying there. He goes, ah! and he's just like his kid, like scrunched up from his feet up, and he just explodes out of the mouth. Like, <laughs> you, 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 you make you make that. I will. <laughs> I'm just saying, like when when I think of like hell, for instance, I look at a lot of like I like to look at a lot of like fantasy art and past art from like past, and like I've seen images of like artistic hell, and it's like you know people falling, people just clambering over, people tearing each other. Because to me, I think. Instead of having all these naked bodies covered in blood, not doing anything, they were also in like a little room. They were. They were like <laughs> yeah, clearly yeah, in a little room. But like, 
I don't know, they get something a little bit more creative of like, they always want to show, oh yeah, look at all these all these naked people. You don't know what they're doing. They might be doing something horny. They might be doing something <laughs> torture. They might be doing some noogies. blood. Noogies. Strangling him. Giving little purple nurples. Like, <laughs> yeah. ew. But Willie's. But it's thought. like, I don't know. Maybe like, what? Yes, Patrick? Maybe oh. just like, I don't know. Have like, mounds of people just like, trying to like, climb up something. They're just tearing apart each other apart. Because like, the whole thing to me about hell is like, this like, never ending hellscape horrible nightmare where you're constantly just being torn apart and put back together just to get torn apart again so like really like go like really graphic with it and like really like amp it up or get super <laughs> super super artistic with it like do because for instance you and me like nope a lot no nope. when when <laughs> when jean jackie eats people yeah it's cool it's yeah. literally just like two <laughs> sheets going boom, 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 yeah but that to me was like terrifying. Claustrophobic. I was like, wet. what the? Yeah, like yeah. show hell, but make it claustrophobic. Have people getting like scrunched and they're like, ah! Because I thought that in scene and no. That was an uncomfortable scene. That was scene, an uncomfortable yeah. scene. And to yeah. me, that looked like hell. Because yeah. I am slightly claustrophobic and one of my fears is being slowly like crushed. Yeah. So show people in like uncomfortable things where they're just getting like, I don't know, going like up. I say it's asshole. Well, that's, do what something. I, that's what I mean. Is I feel like you know when you're doing hell, yeah. you should kind of bring your own ideas and yeah. experiences of what hells might be. And the main characters experienced her own hells in the story, and so it's odd that hell, when it's displayed, is like the way that it was. A bunch of naked blood people just rubbing on him. You know, I uh, I'm gonna play devil's advocate here. I hell. I think I think I am gonna disagree with you guys because it. You did call out it was a it was a. Wee- it was a- <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you called out it. It's like a, a, a Ouija board movie, so it's already like kind of a recognizable like. Okay, this is kind of the premise of things. They had some room where I think they wanted to be experimental with certain aspects of it, but yeah. their intent wasn't to be like we're going to reinvent hell. Oh. And I, I I think if they had reinvented hell, it would have been pretty confusing. To an audience. I agree. So I think the reason the scene is like that, like I was saying, is kind of as an homage. There, it's one yeah. of those pieces of the movie where it's very clear they had elements of like coming of age stories or partying movies. They had elements of um, whatever the hell I said earlier. Hell. Yeah, and then they ha- and then they've got <laughs> the addiction stuff. You were talking about that. Well, the addiction stuff, but then it's also oh. like. Um, like horror sequences, and then also fuck, what is wrong with me? A oh, Ouija board yeah. movie. <laughs> what, 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 <laughs> I just said it. <laughs> yeah, um, but it's, it to, to me, that's what I classified it as. It was another <laughs> one of those where I'm like, oh, this is like a scene from another movie because there was a lot of scenes from the movie that felt like they were taken from other movies and then put into context to this one. For example, the yeah. scene where they were doing the where they were doing possession, yeah, Whoa. and they were like, oh, you know, like recording it. <laughs> And it was, I was just like, this is kind of weird. Yeah. I have to say, I hated that whole part where yeah, everyone had to whip their feet. phones out and but start I, recording each other. Like, I got what it was. Yeah. Um, but, but it's also very obvious, like, this movie doesn't necessarily take place in our reality. Yeah, it takes well, place it's, in it's Australia. Australia. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's like, Ma- I always like to say Mad Max. It's like everywhere else in the world is fine. Just Australia. <laughs> Australia is it's like actually up. Mad Max. <laughs> we need to get the gasoline. It's like, you mean petrol? <laughs> but, no! Uh, <laughs> you mean gas? I mean, no, That's I right. meant the fucking gasoline. Oh, shit. Gasoline! Oh, Josh. <laughs> but anyway, I guess my review. So, to, my final thing, Spun Flats, on my review for. That's top mine! It's my car. Uh, is, you love that guy. Is right when here. so with the fi- with the finale of the movie. Boo! Um, I hate your review. <laughs> yeah, this review sucked. You guys all start booing me. <laughs> with the, the final scenes where she's like, "I've got to go to the hospital and kill this kid," um, and she like gets him, and she's like, "I'm gonna throw him in front of a car." I'm like, "That's a weird way to like kill uh, someone." Yeah. You got him right there. You just yeah, him, choke him out. You got yeah. Why, why did she just laying on a pillow? She yeah. had scissors too. So many she ways was, to yeah. kill him. No. And so maybe there's an artistic thing there. I didn't quite understand, but. I thought it was also odd that she threw herself in front of the car and killed herself. I don't well, know. No, so the friend no. pushed her. We free, we freeze frame Jade. this. We rewound we, we, this. We think Jade pushes yeah. her. Oh, that off would of make her. sense. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I think Jade runs over and pushes her oh. off her brother. Okay, okay. Well, I, then we, I retract think, that. Yeah. Okay. Um, I also my theory. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say my my little yeah, theory. Yeah, 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 yeah. That I think this is hilarious. So I don't I don't necessarily think this is actually it. But when watching it, I was like, it's not, I joked, I was like, it's not her mom. 
It's the kangaroo. <laughs> like because, because with the kid, when he goes to shake the hand and goes like, whoa. You know, if it was his mom, he'd be like, dude, it's your mom. Like, I feel like you would say that. But if it's the kangaroo, what's he going to say? <laughs> like, the kangaroo's like, ah, nah, like, with anger. Like, you should have left me in the street. <laughs> yeah, and then it's like, oh, what's bitch. the kangaroo going to do? And then there was, like, kangaroo imagery later on. And then the kangaroo's the only one that had a motive. And then when she's in the street, <laughs> she's exactly like the kangaroo. Exactly. So I'm saying he shook hands with the kangaroo, and he let that bastard in. So my review of Don't Talk to Me... I actually thought, because I had to think about it for a while. You said, don't talk to me. Well, don't. Did I? Yeah, my <laughs> review for talk to me. Just don't. I thought that there was a lot of nice creative things that I appreciated visually. Um, there was a lot of stuff that I've also seen from other stuff. I felt it was, and then let, let me clarify this, because my rest of my review clarifies this. I felt it was overhyped. Um, people freaked out. But I tried to not let that affect me too much, because I've had that happen so many times before. Um I thought it was overhyped. People were freaking out. I think the ratings are a bit higher than I would give, but I did think it was a good movie. I thought it was a unique movie, and it's the first horror movie in a very long time that actually scared me. Even if it was hmm. just one scene, it got me. So I would, I would give it like a. I think it, I, I, I agree. Good rating, it, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. As much as I felt like I didn't when I first watched it, I, I do now feel like I ended up enjoying. I, it. I feel like you and me are kind of on the same spectrum. Um, because, uh, <laughs> what do you um, mean? <laughs> um, um, I'm autistic, I can say it. Um, but like, I don't think uh, Josh is autistic. No, but I, I meant like, I feel like you mean like in the same way where it's like, for me, you know, cause you guys give me a lot of flack for all the movies I watch. But to me, oh, I love I give enjoy you flack for saying you for... like some freaking shots and skin marine. Exactly, guys, dude. exactly. But to me, like, I can enjoy almost every movie that comes into viewing of my eyeballs. It takes a lot for me to absolutely not enjoy a movie. And Skinnamarink, the only reason I enjoyed it is because I watched it with you guys. On this. And originally, I was going to watch it by myself. I think, sorry to do Skinnamarink again, I think it would be interesting, because you can't make fun of it, so you have to sit there and watch it. Yeah. I think it would be interesting to watch it by yourself without having seen it before. Hmm. It, it, it would be. I absolutely agree. Probably with you. different. But, but to me, I agree with certain horror movies, you just have to give me of one scene. Like, um... <laughs> this is a total random tangent, but when we watched the Gallows, there was that one scene that startled the shit out of me. The one where the jacket, like, no, the part where the, they have the camera panning and she's like looking up, like, <gasps> and she has like weird like bags in her eyes. She looks like a nightmare. It's, I was like, what the fuck? it's like that shot of Willem Dafoe where he's like, oh yeah, oh, like, and it wasn't, oh, yeah. it wasn't even supposed to be scary. Good. It was just a bad camera angle. But like, I agree that if a horror movie. As long as one scene gets me, I'm like, hey, you know what? That's, That's actually, pretty good. It succeeded. I, yeah, it succeeded in some way. And Talk to Me actually had a lot of good points. And I was even talking to you guys. I think they fucking nailed the makeup. And to me, I, was yeah, like, really, I, I, think, they, I think they sold that. Money so, well spent. Their yeah. YouTube channel, they do a lot of kind of like gory graphic stuff. It, so I mean, after it, watching some of their YouTube stuff, I was like, oh, okay. I mean, the, <laughs> the bashing of the head in, or like the kid yeah. bashing his own head uh, in, I was like, holy shit, that looks I, I, nuts. And I think that kind of like really helped sell the movie yeah. because the rest of the movie, you know, isn't really bloody or gory or whatever. And Hell's I, feet. what? Hell's, Hell's the hell scene. <laughs> <But>, uh, <laughs> You're really on that. Yeah. But, that uh, fetus really disturbed me. Uh, <laughs> You know what? You're saying that she ate a fetus. Yeah, there was a fetus. No, hold on. Time out. Oh. I don't know if you guys remember, but one of the first lines in that movie, his friend calls him fetus. Was You're right. A... Yeah, he does. He calls was him a fetus because... Him? Maybe. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, she's got like a bucket. like. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, you're right, though. Yeah, because yeah, he calls him a fetus for like not wanting to smoke. Did yeah. But I, I think, think that was like, probably more of a joke. Yeah. I, don't think there was I just think it's interesting there. to... I think you're uh, a joke. If you're going to have like a movie that's not really focused on blood, we have one bloody gore scene i think like they nailed it and then we were talking about it, i was like man you know because i didn't think they were going to show the kid's face i think they, they kept doing certain angles i was like i don't think they're going to show his face and then they showed it i was like oh shit he's hella fucked up and i was like good for them because yeah. they actually like because again i watch a bunch of movies and sometimes the makeup department really falters and if you have bad makeup for certain things i'm gonna be like yo you kind of fucked up it you felt gotta... like they knew where to spend the money on this yep mm -hmm. exactly 100%. that's what it is they knew what to spend the money on they knew what not to spend the money on unlike skin and marine unlike skin and marine fuck that skin and marine dude. well they didn't really spend much money Fifteen thousand yeah. bucks. Actually, I, I don't know what they spent it on. That's my i do question oh okay that, let's talk about that later yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right um cool we should all righty <laughs> 
I'll interject it later, maybe. I, I really, I couldn't find a good place to insert that into the conversation. That's good, that's good. Okay, that's, that's probably fine. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> start squeaking. No. Patrick <laughs> starts squeaking. What happened was your phone went off. Yeah. And then I like kind of did a quick head movement towards it. My hair flipped around and poked my fucking eyeball. <laughs> And then I was just like slowly moving, and the the bed started. S- oh no! Oh, my voice. Oh, Jesus, God. help me! All right. So uh, before we continue our discussion on talk to me, would Josh like to share his oh, version of a circle of hell? Yes. Well, you know, earlier when we were discussing what hell might look like to some of us, and yes. some of us it can look different to others. Yeah. I made a joke about how I was like, oh, hell to me, which we talked about in an earlier one, would be like an Xfinity like lobby. And then the kid, she's like, I can show you him. He's in hell. Like, show me. And then they're like, why? You get, like, teleported. And she's just in, like, this room with, like, a big-ass line. The, the guy at the register is talking about his vacation. And he's, like, well, he's ringing up this asshole. And this kid is, like, 20 of his line holding this router that has been under his bed for, that he's been paying like, a month off for, like, uh, like, two years. And he just wants to get out of his router. And he's just like, fuck. This thing's so fucking long. <laughs> These guys and are then, trying to. <laughs> and then when he finally gets to the front, the guy's like, "You have an appointment." <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry, we're closed. You gotta take a number. And then you just see Riley going. Yeah! <laughs> it was he just, he just like shot back. <laughs> yeah. I literally, I literally had something like this happen where I went to Winco. Yeah. And I had a can of spam. And Spam was like, hey, we're doing a recall. There's metal in these cans. I was like, I don't want to eat metal. Well, no shit. And so I went back to Winco, and I was like, I want to return this. And they're like, go to the return department. And I was like, what is this? I was like, what is this, Costco? You can't just do it at the register? So I walk over to this, like, hole in the wall. It's the return department. Yeah. And the lady at the counter is having a conversation with some psychopath that's not even returning anything. And they're just talking about their vacation. And I'm, like, and, I'm like, and I'm holding this can of spam, and I'm like sitting there, and I sat there for like ten minutes, and I, they were very, it was very obvious I was there, and I was sitting there, and I was, I looked at the spam, and I was like, you know what? Is it worth I, the two two fifty? I would pay four dollars to not be here right now, yeah. and I threw it in the garbage and walked off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We anyway, all hit those points, man. That was, that was my hell. Yeah. It kind of reminds me. I was at the Alderwood Mall, like, last week. Um, and I went to the candy store, and I just, like, randomly picked up some stuff. What'd you but get? I got this. <laughs> it was, like, a, it's like, a, like, gourmet, um, you know, like, chocolate-covered penis. <laughs> For a second, I was like, actually, no. It, it was like, it's like a gourmet Rice Krispies treat that was like good. a s'mores flavor. I haven't been to the candy shop yet. It was really good. Sheesh. <laughs> um, anyway, I, Sheesh. I picked up some stuff and I like kind of walked up to the counter and there was a guy like at the counter and I was, wa- as I was walking up, he kind of like, kind of like moved over and started like looking out the front of the store and I, I set the things down, and I kind of do it a little loudly so he can hear the stuff being put down. But he just continues to stand there and, like, stare Wait, is out. the employee? Yeah. And, he, and I just, like, stand... I'm, like, standing there staring at him for, like, ten seconds, and I'm like, Hey! <laughs> Dude, that's, like, at my well, work, people will do that shit, where they pretend not to see someone. I'm just like... They're right in front of you. What are you doing? Like, greet them and bring them to your register. <laughs> Those people don't get paid enough to even Same, give but... a shit. <laughs> God, Jesus Christ. When, when I was working at Sherwin Williams, there was a time I almost, like, ripped off an old man's head. Because I, I was working with this, like, 68-year-old like man named Bruce. And I'm this. I'm over at one wall, and he and he's, like, doing something. And he walks over to the register, where a customer is now entering and through the store, goes to the cash register, looks at the customer and goes... We'll be with you in one second. Walks away, and I make eye contact with Bruce as he walks past me and goes back to the back room as I'm standing there on the other side of the building. I look at him like, we do-. And so I go to the cash register. I'm like, hello, sorry about that. How may I help you? And Bruce later was like, oh, I thought you were going to help him. I was like, you literally <laughs> walked up to him and said, oh, somebody will be with you. I was like, why can't you do anything? I got wet my nose. Bruce made my nose wet. Well, oh. um, while, while Blake's wiping his nose... Uh, <laughs> He's, what the fuck are you doing over That was there? the most horrific thing I've heard 
And I, I wanted to, to bring up like another interpretation oh. of hell. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm sitting here right now and I'm experiencing. <laughs> yeah. um, ha- have any of you watched the, the show Preacher? Yes, based on the not. graphic novel. Yes. So the interpretation of Helen Preacher is that like everybody in hell has their own room and they relive like the worst part of their life over and over and over for all of eternity. <laughs> That's cool. That's hella cool. That's not man. cool. The fucking... That's <laughs> hella cool. That's, hell. That's not cool. Hella cool. <laughs> so um, I guess we're going to wrap up our opinions on Talk to Me. Oh, no, yeah. no, 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 I'm talking about Preacher. Okay, fucking, sorry, sorry. The goddamn cowboy had to watch his fucking daughter die over and over and over. Yeah, you laugh? What the fuck is wrong with you, asshole? That wasn't a funny fucking scene. I know it's a funny goddamn series, but... <laughs> It's okay, Patrick. All right, who's revealing? Um, it's fine. What, what does Ryan it's and Patrick fine. have to say before we get to me? Because I think I have, like, the last bit. Yeah. I forgive you, Josh. Um, I don't. That's all I need. I, I don't. I think Josh spoke very elegantly Thank about you. the good nope. points of... <laughs> Talk to me. So, so did Blake. Blake had some good points. <laughs> now, to clarify, if you're just watching part two, I meant to say fuck all. It's all the same part. I'm not separating them. You're going to put them all in one? Yes. <laughs> oh, wait, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes, are you, do you, are you like, pay attention to like how I edit the episode? He doesn't, no. no. Yeah. I know you don't. You fucking anyway. Don't. Josh is like, I lived it. I don't have to listen to it. <laughs> I lived your episode, Blake. The main thing I have to say about Talk to Me, yes, all the acting was great. I pretty much had no problems with the acting and stuff. Like, I think we brought up earlier that one kid that didn't know what elves were. I thought that was weird. a weird <laughs> acting scene. <laughs> but I think that was most of the faults of the writing, in general, the writing and like the storytelling um, <laughs> it just sort of felt off. Like, yeah. I, I, Certain I, I, parts where it felt kind of like uh, jumbled. It was jumbled together quite a bit, and it, it did, like, try to push the, like, you know, kind of drug or experimental, you know, coming-of-age aspect quite a bit, which is, I mean, that's fine, I but it's not really an effective story for me either. Um, the thing that, like, really almost, like, pissed me off was, like, they established the rules of the hand. We never got around to, like, really where the hand actually came from, because all that one Josh, Josh guy said was, like... I got it from this other dude, and they never said where that dude got it from. Oh, so. I have info. You have info on Jeez, that. I believe Christ. they're making a prequel. Okay. Really? Well, yeah. <laughs> that would actually pre- be pretty interesting. Pre- prequel aside, they didn't establish at all where, I mean, the hand, the hand came from nowhere, basically. Um, Which I kind of liked. I, 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 I dislike that. I wish yeah. it came from like a witch doctor. Ryan's like, fuck you, Josh! <laughs> well, they I want of, the backstory. They I think the rules. I discussed it, but I kind of like the idea, although they were being very irresponsible with it, of yes. it being like, I don't know where the fuck this came from. <laughs> yeah, let's just fuck with it. <laughs> yeah. No, and, and that's the part that kind of like pissed me off a bit, uh, too. It was like, how did they establish like this 90 second rule about it, or like you can only like have 90 seconds with a spirit? And then when they had like their timers going and like this. You know, Mia was like getting close to the 90 second it also pissed me off that like she was like kind of freaking out but like they were within like grabbing distance of her like yes, they could yeah, easily they were, hit her they did the same thing with the kid and they, they did, did, they no, did, they did it with like, everybody, everybody everybody every scene every right? single you yeah, know but it's good um every single time like they could have yanked the hand out like pretty easily like they were within grabbing distance and like they're all just kind of sitting down like she's freaking out like what do we do like what <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they just kind of let this shit I mean, happen like, this four of you <laughs> tackle them I, like uh, it's like do something. And, and it was like especially the worst with the kid because yes. it's mm-hmm. like I that whole scene I just literally felt like all of these high schoolers are the one like they know the rules it's established they know the rules of this like creepy hand thing yeah. and they're literally just letting this kid bash his fucking they, skull they in are, so because, like they let him just start hitting his head I was like where the fuck is anybody going over there to like grab him yeah because like, we we're talking about so uh, in talk to me one of the setups that they do is they uh, tie you up with a belt to yep. the chair. But they tied around your waist. Yeah. And and of course, that stops nothing. Yeah. just stuck to a chair. Yeah. And I'm like, they should tie it around your chest or something. So that way you prevent what the kid I'm doing bashing his head. But yeah, every time somebody... <laughs> <laughs> every time somebody started freaking out, 
Characters did nothing to stop them. The one that pissed me off, put your finger down. The Damn, that, what did he do with the, that? The finger? part that pissed me off is when Damn, Riley. Yeah, why I smell like that? <laughs> is when Riley was bashing his head at the hospital against the tiles. Oh, Where the yeah. fuck did the mom go? She just yeah. fucked off for like a I minute. I didn't know she ran <laughs> down the hall. Yeah, for it was a minute, weird. I didn't even realize that was at the hospital. Yeah, no, I didn't realize. Yeah, I didn't realize. They were having at all. the sister and the mom bathe them, and the nurses like run in like but an hour later, I, like, oh, he's I, bashing himself. I do agree with you, Ryan. That it seemed kind of like all they had to do is have some sort of throwaway line of like where at least part of the rules came from. Yeah. Because they're just like, oh yeah, 90 seconds, you do all this stuff. And I was like, I do, on one hand, I like the idea that this is completely random, all this stuff. I, I, I like the mystery of it, but at least give me a witch doctor if, and if they something were, I think, I was, hold on. Okay. I think what they should have done is. To make it solid, they should never have talked about Duckett and his brother again after the beginning scene. Probably. Because they talked about Duckett again, and they went back to his brother, and they yep, talked to the he brother. popped up. And I wish they hadn't done that, because to continue the whole thing of, like, they don't know about this hand, you don't know where the rules are, why are we going back to the That would have solidified the mystery, two? then. Yeah. Absolutely. Instead, they're like, yeah. Because I really thought I was going to get exposition, which I was like, oh, yeah, they do this in every movie. And I didn't get exposition. All I got was Cole being like, how the fuck did you guys find me? And then he left. And I was like... Yeah, oh, like literally, yeah. they were talking to him on the bus, and he was yep. just like, "Well, I mean, you just waited out pretty much, and they'll leave him." <laughs> and that was it. They just I left. thought I remembered stuff in the story explaining the ninety-second rule. Kind of came from that kid that kills himself at the beginning of the movie. That he says um, that's the rule. No, I don't. I don't know if he says that specifically the rule, but I think he messed with the hand so much that's where some of that rule came from. Like maybe okay. it implies like ninety seconds is the limit because so he, he messed with it the most. He did. Okay, okay so maybe I maybe I I wasn't maybe I wasn't I too much. Either. Yeah, but no, yeah. but okay. I mean, also, who names your kid Duckett? Uh, Australia. <laughs> Australia. Oh yeah, <laughs> I forgot. So I want to add one other thing. Shit, fuck Australia. Australia. It was Don't that thing where I had my finger up earlier. What was oh, talking sorry. About? What what were we talking about there though? I was talking about um, shit. The rules. The not it, tying the kid not, down or not like saving them. Down. I was gonna say I interpreted the scene where he started bashing his head in. I oh, definitely yeah. was like, someone should stop him. Yes, yep. yeah. But I think like punching. a few hits in can definitely be explained with like shock. Exactly. Yeah, like if but everyone he in the room is like really hard. Yeah. No, he had like good five, six, or seven solid yeah, hits, too and it's like. Okay, someone's gotta like jump, like Josh, uh, Josh, Josh, Josh. Someone's gotta jump this kid. <laughs> yeah. well, the no. only reason they got up is because he was gonna pull his eyeball out. That's the only reason. I know he it, was yeah, that's gross. it was very yeah. bizarre. Yeah, like, oh, too far. But I was like, I was like, yo, someone should have gotten up at some yeah. point. And I'm like, I don't know. It just. It, but the, the I thing agree. is, I felt the same way. Yeah. And then I felt like they kept doing it throughout the rest of the movie. They where did it a nobody more was times. nobody was reacting. Nobody was like yeah. stopping or jumping in or doing anything. <laughs> and I'm just like, yo. Spe- speaking it, of not reacting, remember when Mia just walked out with that the oh, little yeah. brother out of the oh, hospital? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Takes yeah. the brother, brother. Yeah, yeah. and I'll, and I told them I was like, yo, what the fuck? He's <laughs> up to like machine. They was like a baby. <laughs> Like, the whole thing about the nurse's station is they have this fucking Please. computer system that tells you when a fucking person's flatlining. And when uh, you unplug them, they flatline. Hospitals yeah. are probably the least realistic places in horror movies. Like, did you watch Halloween Kills? Yes. No. Yes, I did! Of course I did! They're like, God, I don't know where to put all these dead bodies. And they just uh. have them in the hospital lobby where everybody is, basically. And they're just like, that's a dead fucking body in there. <laughs> with, like, all the blinds open. Yeah. Doesn't make any sense. And then that guy, like... Oh, like jumps out the window and dies. And then uh, 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 the Brainiac kid from Breakfast Club is like, that's not Michael Myers? And go like, no, you fucking idiot. And then he's like, I'm evil, die tonight. <laughs> he died. That's yeah, it was movie. so stupid. They were chasing around, like, basically Danny DeVito. Like, it's freaking Michael <laughs> yeah. Myers. He killed all these people. But he's like some chubby dude that can't freaking lift the goddamn pen off the god fucking table. And he's just like, <laughs> have you guys seen... My cat, or something. He doesn't say anything, but he's basically just bumbling like a boob. And 30 towns, people are like, KILL HIM! And I was like, I feel like maybe you should think about something first before you just commit manslaughter. Yeah. And then he jumps out a window, and again, that brainiac kid's like, Oh shit, was that not Michael Myers? I was like, <laughs> No fucking shit, Tommy, you it's idiot! Like, the only reason they thought he was Michael was because he had the, um, the... The jumpsuit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the outfit for the asylum place. And they're like, Oh, that's See? gotta be him. Do you think that might have been like homage to Halloween 2 when they run over that 
No. Jade? Okay. No. Fuck me, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I wish. Yeah, I love yeah. that scene. But, um, <laughs> so, can I give my, like, oh, yeah, final yeah, sorry, on that? Yeah, yeah no, no that, worries. Uh, so, no, I, and, yeah, like I said, Josh summarized most of the other points anyway, but <laughs> I, I kind of have three ratings, uh, for this. Okay. Act, acting, I'd say nine out of ten. It's, like, pretty high up there. I was very happy with the acting. Writing, storytelling, I'm kind of somewhere between like a three and four out of ten. I just like feel like I could poke a lot of holes in it. Um, and then, uh, what was the other? Uh, basically, like prop design and you know, makeup and set pieces and all that. That's like eight, nine out of ten. Like, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. really high quality stuff. So, if you go there, you know. Maybe just go there for the <laughs> for the cool uh, can you, concept. But no, can you imagine how stupid that movie would have been if the fucking makeup on that kid sucked? I know that would have <laughs> like, that would have dropped. Like, oh, like, like, yeah. I don't know if you guys ever watched. That would have like, dropped um, it pretty hard. The Punisher Netflix show. Did you ever watch? I did. That? I watched the whole People thing. Yeah. That, okay, right? Did you watch season two? Though I did watch season two. Also. So the worst part of that entire fucking thing is at the end of season one. Punisher fucks up Jigsaw's face. Mm -hmm. Season two, Jigsaw's face is not fucked up. <laughs> he has a couple of boo boos, and I was like, "No, his face was grinded against broken glass and cut the shit up." And he's like, "I have a couple little stitches." I was like, "You don't stitch that back." Yeah, and, and I'm like, "I would, I would be pissed if that kid wrecked his face in Talk to Me." And when the camera pans to him, he just has like a black eye. Or like, oh, it's, it's like beautiful. It's yeah, like amazing. <laughs> he just has like a little uchi boo boo. He's like, it's, oh, it's like boo boo. It's like in some movies when that happens to people. Sometimes after the fact, it literally just shows like some like blood on their head. Yeah, or something. Or they just like, mom, when yeah. the lady got hit by the car and she was just like, oh yeah, she's just. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, yeah, on her. To, to me, to to sell your horror movies, if you're gonna be gory or graphic, you gotta do it. You gotta do it well, you gotta do it accurate, you gotta do it correctly, or, you know, like, I watch a lot of 80s horror movies, and they go over the top, people's heads are exploding for no fucking reason, <laughs> but they sold the gore, like, holy shit, yeah. he's killing that guy. They did. And, you know, nowadays, certain horror movies, I watch stuff where I'm like, something happens, and I'm like, how the fuck is everybody, like, again, Ma is a good example, where I'm like, everybody's getting hurt in certain ways, but they're just kind of, like, walking it off, and nobody cares, and I was like, what the fuck, and I'm like, I don't know, but, um. I just want to. I just want to interject with that. And no then in, in freaking um, at the end of Talk to Me, when, yeah, when they show the was, kid that was bashing his head, he, he looks like perfect, like he somehow beautiful. recovered. Yeah, he exactly. recovered he looked better than so, he did before. <laughs> can we talk about the ending for that no. real quick? Well, which part Please. of the ending? Like Shut up. <laughs> the the twist, not twist. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah. A yeah. Lot of people, most of the people I talked to really liked it. I thought it was way too obvious. It should have been a lot more subtle. I I thought it was pretty obvious, too. I did like it. I felt like it was like, oh, that's a good way to end it. It felt like how they intended it to end all along. I Like, I'm fine with it ending the way it did. I just wanted it to be more subtle in the sense that I didn't want it to be like, oh, she's lying on the road. She looks like she's freaking dead already on the ground. I wanted it to be like, I, I want somehow I wanted the audience to be like not realizing that she's dead at all. Her going throughout life, and then all of a sudden, like she say, shakes someone's hand, and then you realize that's when she's being summoned, and that's the twist. Yeah, it was really obvious she was dead. Yeah. Like w when she got back up, I was I, like, oh, I guess she's like kind of like all I, hurt especially and stuff. by the time she got to the hospital. That yeah, she literally it like for me. appeared yeah. in the middle of the hospital, and it's like okay. I, I figured she was dead the second she got hit by the car. No, I, I kind of I'd knew. Survived. I kind of knew. The, <laughs> I pretty much knew it. the ending. Thank you. Since they discussed, ever since the, when they found the dad was still alive, I was like, oh, I know what the ending's gonna be. I, I didn't think, you know, I didn't, I didn't. My own personal opinion. I kind of liked how it ended in the sense of it was kind of plain, um, but it felt like. Like I said, it felt like when they thought of the story, they mm -hmm. had the end, and then I feel like the end is kind of what they had. Like, they had this cool idea, and then they focused the movie around that. I really liked, um, even though we knew what was going on, but, like, when she was kind of slowly approaching the, the lit candle, and then she reached out to the hand, reaching out of the darkness, and grabbed onto it, and then oh, she yeah. appeared to them. I thought that was kind of cool. I thought it was kind of cool, yeah. I, although I do agree, it's also pretty plain and exactly what I right. expected. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. 
Um, what I wanted to touch Are upon. You done? I'm done. Yeah, okay. that's all I got. What do you want to see? Um, what do you want to see, Big Dog? I'll show you what I'm going to say. Puff, Yo, it's master. MC Patty D back in the house. Mr. Whaler. Century. Ho, ho, ho. Uh, whale. Um, Whaler doesn't say ho, 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 you're fired. He says, okay, <laughs> it's fine. I'm sure you can find somebody else to be the Whaler. It's like Matthew McConaughey replaced halfway through. <laughs> oh, my God. And he's just abs. He's, he's just, just like, shirtless and jacked. Uh, I'll do it for free, man. <laughs> I just like acting. <laughs> I just really, really love Thanks, Matt. Script. I think your script is probably 20 <laughs> Top like notch. Eating it. <laughs> yeah. right. He this, just freaking kills good. somebody <laughs> standing there. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> I'm like, all right, for Court Perfect Matthew McConaughey, I loved you in Ring of Fire. <laughs> and he's like, all right, all right, all right. Thank he's you. like, I love you, Blake Westfall. <laughs> I'm like, we high five. And then we kiss. So I assume that you have more things to say about Talk to Me after me? Of course I do. About like the dad stuff. Yes. Okay. So I'm like, dad stuff. so what I wanted to talk about was, I mean, it it <laughs> might. The... Josh. Um. I think you might want to talk about yours first, because I want to kind of talk. Are about... you sure? No, you talk first. Okay. okay. Well, so mostly I I agree with with mostly what everyone has been saying. Um, I think you know the acting is probably like eight out of nine. I think the storytelling is probably like. I'll just say half. It's probably like half good, half bad. I think yeah. some parts could have been stronger. Some parts could have been... Uh, some parts, I think, were strong enough. I will say maybe like six. I didn't think the writing was that bad. I just think some of the dialogue was a little out of touch. You're right. The writing didn't piss me off. It yeah. Just, no. There was a lot of... It fell short for me, for sure. Inconsistencies. And it was also very... It has the same issue that a lot of horror movies have of like... Certain things are only happening because of its convenience of the fact that this is make believe. Like the fact that she leaves a hospital without getting stopped. Yeah. And the hospital nurses and nobody paid attention to the fact that the kid was unplugged. And then the fact of like. Just like. Um, oh, and also we're talking about the <laughs> beginning when the kid bashes his head in and everything. The cops talk to everyone for maybe 10 minutes oh, and then sends yeah. them home. Like, and I was like, get out of here, I was like, rascals. I don't think cops There's no drug would... testing. There's no Dude, real investigation. Yeah, I'm like, I don't yeah. think they would just let the kids go. It's so like a different country, too. That's true. So maybe I don't understand how stuff... I guess but, um, don't know how Australia works. I had, a, I had a theory. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the friggin' police walking out. Crikey! <laughs> what the hell happened in what here? What are you doing here, mate? I had a... Uh, <laughs> were drugs involved? No? Get out of here. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I had a theory, uh, I think probably halfway through the movie, when the dad was, like, showing up or something, and he was like, oh, I want to talk to you, blah, blah, blah. I had a theory that the dad wasn't real. Because mm -hmm. because the dad, didn't, the dad didn't show up physically until after their talk to me night. And he and didn't then, show up to anyone else. He didn't show either. up to anybody, and he kept calling her. And I thought there was going to be this twist of like, the dad's not home. The dad's like missing, or no, not missing, but he's on a trip. Well, it was because, also weird that she was kind of like semi homeless too, it seemed like. Well, like she see, kept she was, sleeping over at other people's places. Yeah. You do see him once before she's possessed. When? There's a scene at the beginning, at the very beginning of the movie, where she's like washing dishes or something, and he comes into the background. And they, like, kind of have a conversation, but she doesn't look at him. It's, like, the establishing of that she's got a problem with. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, but then, but then, uh, after that, she goes and spends the night at someone's house. Yeah. So, I'm saying, like, so, from going from there, he might have, like, left because why did she go spend the night at their house? I think, well, I think because she blames him for the mom's death. Okay. Because, um, the whole concept was that he wasn't, like, there for her while she owed Okay. Him. But... <laughs> I think that's the reason why she was over at their house is after the mom died, they became like a second family. So yeah, and yeah. The, yeah, I understood that part, but yeah. um, for most of it, I felt like you know the dad was never in any other scene with any other characters, and yeah. nobody talked to him. And again, he kept calling, and I was like, I bet the dad is like out of town or he's at home, and she's not talking to him. And the dad that she is talking to is actually like a ghost or like a ghost pretending to be her dad. Because then the scene happens when the ghost mom is like, that's not your father outside. That's a different. I was like, oh shit, I was kind of right. But then the normal dad was there and yeah. there was just another ghost. And as soon as that started happening and he started attacking her and strangling her, you guys heard me and I was screaming. I was like, what's going to happen is <laughs> she's going to be having a seizure. Yep. Normal dad's going to come over and try to stop him and she's going to stab him. He called dad. the scene 100%. No, behold, it happened. Yeah. Well, I interpret that not necessarily as another ghost, but as a hallucination. Wait, that's what, sorry, that's what I, I get. Oh, okay. She was getting kind of like the bleed over possession. Yeah, I, I thought it was like a trick. 
I yeah. thought the dad that she was talking to, where he, especially because when he was reading that suicide note, I was like, that note seems so hokey. Like, and then when the mom's like, he didn't write that, or like, I didn't write that, I was like, maybe that is like another trick. Maybe it's all tricks. Because like, I was like, that would have been interesting. I yeah, I kind of thought that would have been interesting. And then you know, the ending I felt was pretty cliche, but I think it was still a decent ending. <laughs> um, I think it's interesting that the hand ended up in. Greece? I don't know what that's all yeah, about. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I was in Greece. Or all these people who talk Greek? I don't know what that was all about. I, I think that's interesting. Oh, I like that. I thought it was cool. Yeah. yeah. I, but, I'm fine with it ending up anywhere else. Yeah. But um, uh, yeah, I think it'd anyway. be kind of wild if that happens and it's fucking the Riley kid again. He's like, I want you to bash my face in again, <laughs> Mia. Or, yeah, he's doing it again. Oh my God. What if it was like some I stupid, what if it was like some crazy <laughs> time traveling thing? Where Mia's the ghost that possessed him and bashed his head in. Like, what if she grabs his hand and it cuts back to earlier in the film where he first gets in? That's why he freaked out because he's like, oh my god, it's Mia. Can you imagine that? That is some serious, <laughs> stupid art. I do that. I could do that. That's like, some like the art. spirit world is like a different time. time? Like time oh my god. Way. I wrote a. Time is you just wrote something just like right Dark there. Souls. <laughs> <laughs> well, um. Shut up. What I wanted to say, if you're done, are you done? You're done. Well, hold on. Hold on. Uh, hold on. I do want to, again, just say, I don't really You're garbage. I am garbage. Um, I, it's hard to write a horror movie and explain what every character is doing at every moment. Because I felt like the reaction times of characters were really slow. And it's one of those things where, for instance, Cabin in the Woods does a very good job of explaining it. There's chemicals, there's there's mm. there's hormones in there, there's stuff happening, characters are getting locked into rooms. It's explaining why characters aren't helping each other. And in this one, I was like, why is nobody... Because when the kid is bashing his head against the tiles, where is anybody? Why isn't the sister... Deer, major because, deer in headlights. Because, for instance, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we kind of make jokes about, my brother has seizures. When he has seizures, you fucking do something about it because else he's going to bash his fucking head on something. So if you see someone freaking out, set, I understand, like, you'd be like, oh god, I, I'm panicking, I'm stressed out. I'm like... Okay, but he's clearly like killing himself. Yeah. But like, also, like five people all at once panicking. Yeah, right. like, like, exactly. That's the like, biggest problem. Is that the number of people throws. there. Yeah. Dude, one part I liked is when his sister came and she ran over and immediately, put her hand there. I was like, that was pretty smart thinking. But I was like, nobody else thought about like stopping him. Like Josh just was grab like, him. a big dude. He couldn't just grab the kid. The kid weighed like ten pounds. Yeah, he was a little, <laughs> big, little, <laughs> little baby kid. Him <laughs> oh, fuck! Um, I don't know. But um, yeah, there was just certain parts, and again, it's the whole like. Well, we have to progress the movie, or certain things have to be happening. I'm like, yeah, but you're not really explaining why none of the characters are doing anything to to help a certain character. And it's one of those things where like, I really hate when they don't explain, oh, this character's dying, this character's getting killed, or something's happening. And it's like, cool. Wasn't he with three other people, and aren't they all within arm's length of him? Like, where where's yeah. anybody to do anything? So that's just one of my gripes yep. that I wish horror movies... And horror movie writers would be a little bit more. I don't know. It, try, again, just take some creative writing to yeah, just build, try to build that zero in. in on like, okay, why why did five people not do, do anything? Yeah, and I don't know, but yeah, I guess that's mostly all I wanted to say. I did like the movie. Yeah, I don't think it, I think it's I think it's weird. I think some parts were like kind of bananas, um, but I think overall, I think I think it was. A, pretty good movie and especially yeah. for being like a Ouija board movie but not being a Ouija board movie and I really like when movies do that where they're like oh hey this is basically this type of movie but it's a different element and the element's cool the hand thing was cool yeah, I was so like unique. that's cool yeah made I've... it like a lot more physical than a, a Ouija board yeah. movie yeah and it like gripped your hands yeah. and stuff. they're like, like oh really you're cool. stuck on it yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, what I liked was how it wasn't just like some like random cursed just prop hand it's just like I'm pretty sure I don't know how much they touched upon in the movie, but it's supposed to be like an embalmed hand, like an actual hand. Like that mummified the, hand? That was the myth. Yeah, yeah okay. the myth is that it's an embalmed hand, which it probably is. It's probably the embalmed well, yeah, hand. Yeah, because I mean, there, there is, is a scene like when they grab it and it actually kind of like moves a little bit, so it's not uh, completely like just solid and like ding, 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 if you knock on it. Yeah. Um, Were you all done? Are you quite finished? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so what I wanted to talk about, um, the reason I didn't want to talk before you, because mine kind of has, um, I was going to talk about the reveal of the the, the fake dad yeah. thing. Um, so the mom in there is like, that's not your dad, that's the spirits impersonating your dad. And I'm like, oh, that's actually kind of cool. <laughs> um, and then that stuff happens. 
two dads. <laughs> That's two Christmases. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so when she was like talking to her spirit mom like normally yeah. before, like her her spirit mom was all like nice and stuff, like I love you, I'm crying, mm-hmm. boo boo, gaga, goo boo. Um, but then at the end, the mom is like, kill, yeah. kill the fucking kid, kill your friend's brother. Like when when she's at the edge of the road and none of the cars are stomping, they're just honking like you fucking assholes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but when they're at the too. road, the mom is just like suddenly like evil, like kill him. We want to keep him. Well, yeah, because I, mean, I, I was like, thinking like, yeah. what if that was spirits impersonating the mom trying to make her do it because oh, they want to keep him. That's always what I interpreted it as. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good. Well, because I, like I think something that's also kind of interesting is because the mom gets grosser and grosser throughout yeah. the movie. Mm-hmm. Oh, did she? Visually, she did, yeah. yeah I visually, didn't notice Because that, when she first showed up, she's like Kinda nice. normal-ish. Like, she mostly like, normal, normal-ish. Yeah. Like, oh. She looked like she just died. And then okay. at the end, I was like, why does she look gooey? Because she is. She's like like decaying. Gooey. And no, I no, wonder if it's like one of those things where it's like you're, I don't know if it's because, oh, she's dying more, so now she's becoming grosser and grosser and grosser, because her her mom died at the beginning of the movie, right? Or I th- or was it like a year ago, and this was like a one-year anniversary? Oh, it was, it was yeah, a year Happy ago. So a year ago. Dead so her body would have been already decomposed, so why are we seeing it decompose? And I kind of think, like, I wonder if it's decomposing because maybe maybe the, the illusionary ghosts are gross and disgusting and like when they do like the oh i'm your parent or i'm the loved one it's like mm-hmm. they can't keep up the image it's because when the 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 fake dad finally breaks in like his face is all fucked up yeah he's all fucked like the up actual and he, dad. yeah he didn't look like the actual dad mm-hmm. and the dad's also not dead yeah so i think that basically they're like zombies like they can mimic the features and everything but i don't think they can change too much of the appearance so at the end when she's all like you should kill this fucking kid I think that's like you can tell that's like the real like that's the actual hallucination one or the the fake one because it's 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 gross it's disgusting mm. it's melting and I don't think because I think the first one she talked to was probably actually like her real mom maybe or it's like I said that they they, they can't keep up the image of like pretending I just think that'd be kind of interesting. That's what I. That's what I thought. Yeah, was, because yeah. again, the dad mm-hmm. came in and he looked like a fucking zombie. But I was like, he's not even dead. Why does yeah. he look like that? Plus, the bloated the bloated, bloated woman at the beginning. Yeah, was definitely deep and bloated. Deep and bloated. Deep and bloated. Like her freaking right eye was like, <laughs> like yeah. spinning around and but shit. But like, she didn't die and then like. <laughs> <"Pff,"> like <laughs> just like died like that. Yeah. So she definitely was decomposed. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. So I, I was just kind of thinking about this just now, like the the ninety second rule and stuff. And they say if if you if you uh, let them stay in you for too long, they'll want to stay. Yeah. But it came obvious that that wasn't the case. They want you to stay. They want you mm-hmm. to. They want to keep you and like keep you in a fucking headlock. All yeah, the yeah, yeah. They want to headlock out. you and eat. And share, they make it headlock. Their feet. <laughs> yeah, I actually, <laughs> eating some and giving you some. <laughs> I actually kind of like that. I wish they would, like, <laughs> touch upon that more, but it, they only did, like, a few times. Yeah. Um, if they do make the prequel, I think that would be really cool. I, I believe that's what they're doing. Nice. I, I just want to know where this hand came from. Yeah, that's yeah. my... <laughs> I also want to see more of the spirit world. More headlocks. Yeah, cool. yeah. It's like more headlocks. It's like yeah. it's it's nowhere! Fully nude. They uh they use AI and CGI to bring back Macho Man Randy Savage in the spirit. Oh yeah. yeah, he's like Satan. Snap at a Slim Jim. Oh, I got you on the headlock. Oh, you puker. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking puke star. He's like, ah, pukes are just to the left of me. Pukes are just to the right of me. I only got two arms. You better grab me by the hand. Grab my hand. <laughs> <laughs> Take my I got you, kid. Quit the crap. <laughs> yeah, keep you. <laughs> um, I think we should probably wrap up because we think, uh, do we want to do like a final rating. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess so. I would give it an what? eight. I think an yeah. eight. I was gonna say eight, 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 eight like a high seven, like seven point. That's funny. I, I thought you guys didn't like it. I, I'm. Did we change your mind. <laughs> you changed my mind yeah. after you. Yeah kind of mentioned some of the things about the right like i think i was probably a little too harsh on on like the writing and the dialogue like mm-hmm. it it's serviceable there's yeah. nothing 
abhorrent about it. I I just think there were certain parts where I was like, that comes off a little it's, weird. It's, I think the I think the the main three, the, sorry, the main four. Uh, uh, what would you call them? Um, offenders are the kid Riley, yeah. his, his friend Mullet Kid, <laughs> uh, yeah, just that kid, Joss, yeah, and Haley. The, the, the tough girl. What are we babysitting? Yeah. Those four characters are so written really like weird high archetypes. schoolers or kids that, that I don't think exist. Um, <laughs> I, I never I, have I existed. Think, I think, not in our experience. Not in our experience. Yeah. I think their dialogue is a little, oh, uh, what would a cool kid say? Yeah. What, would a, what would a funny tough guy say? Yeah. And what would like two 14-year-olds who were dipshits say? <laughs> I think those four characters are the only ones where I'm like, I think your dialogue is a little... A little out of touch because you're clearly a you're clearly a trope. You're the you're the trope of you're the tough girl who's like, oh, this is my party, yo, I'm the one with the hand, I do all this shit. Oh, this is fucking crazy. And Josh's like, I'm the tough ah, I, 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 I do this stuff, man, and I think we should do all this stuff. Woo! He's that guy. Yeah. And I was like, alright, I think but like all the other characters that they actually focused on, you know, Mia and Jade, I think they did really good. They were complex mm-hmm. and yeah, yeah. yeah so I think just good the cliche trope characters, I think Needed a little bit more attention to them. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah. For sure. But what's your rating? You're saying like a, like yeah, a 7 like and an eight. 8? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm about the same there, too. Josh uh, says like a 12 out of 10. So, you know, <laughs> per- so beyond perfect. It, this would be a rating not based on what I think the rating actually is, but in terms of how much I enjoyed it, taking into account everything that it took to make it, because this is a independently produced movie at a very high budget mm. for its ranking. Um... And so, of course, with that, you also have a lot of those issues, which I think are, you know, for its class, fine. And those issues are things that I bring up to discuss, but I don't think they're almost unavoidable. And I think it's unfair to expect a first time director to direct the same as someone who's directed like 10 movies. Yeah. Um, but I would I would give it in terms of all the movies I've seen where I'm going to place it on the board like a seven point five on the high end. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's not, I mean, it sounds about right. That's like it's about, not it's yeah. not bad. I don't think it's midway. I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. But yeah, there I were think definitely it's... parts where like like we're, you guys were talking about the acting being like an eight to a nine. Yeah, I'd probably Pretty say high. there's definitely some parts where the acting's great. I think the lead actress did an excellent job. Yes, there's parts where it's like I was like, holy shit, this is an indie movie. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and so I'd I'd probably give it a bit lower but I think with everything it did and there is something to be said about having a successful ad campaign that's a big thing to give Skin Marine is if you're what is that not comparable it is no no no, it's fine it's fair it's if you're able to bring if you're able to make your money back on your movie you, you basically you did a pretty good job yeah and most people enjoy the movie. Yeah, seven point five. I thought it was very good. It had good scares. And to be honest, there's because recently uh, me and my partner Mallory were looking at like horror movies that came out back in the eighties to movies that come out the you know the twenty twenties or whatever. And um, you know, I've seen a few newer horror movies, and I enjoyed Talk to Me because it again it took the it took the idea of the Ouija board that we all agree on that it took this idea of like the classic. You play a game, you summon a demon or a ghost or some bullshit, you fuck up, it stays, you're fucked up, there's blood, oh shit, here's some hell, you're dead. Um, But it took it in a way where it was a new version of the game, and I thought it was a creative version of the game without being so, like... This is the new Ouija board. <laughs> like, you know, like, so it's like, oh, kids yeah. are going to be buying these. Yeah, look, we, just had this <laughs> we man, took what you it. know about the Ouija board and we turned it all upside down. It's called the. We. We. I'm trying to say Ouija pad. The Wee Wee board. The G Wee board. G Wee. But, but, you know, like, it's, it's interesting because there's so many movies about Ouija boards. And, you know, it's kind of like one of the reasons I like Nope so much because Nope is just, you know, a lot of the same premise of Jaws, but without being Jaws. Yeah, it's an adventure. It's I an would adventure, say adventure horror. Adventure mm-hmm. horror. And this talk to me is a um, supernatural game horror. Like, what would you call a Ouija board? That's not a game. What is that? It's Some tough because bo- I, I would, I would, cl- I would say it's definitely you know in terms of classifying horror and action, it's definitely a horror movie. I yeah. don't know about that. It was pretty actiony when they moved the the what do they call that? 
the hand. The eye? <laughs> no, <laughs> in the Ouija board. Yeah. Oh, the, 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 I think it's an eye. eye. Yeah, it's oh, a, that's what I would call it. A, a, magnifying glass? I don't know. I, there's like a different word for it. I know, I know what you're talking about, though. Per knuckle. Can you shut up? Right. <laughs> Jeez. But I would say, <laughs> you know, uh, I wouldn't necessarily <laughs> okay. say like a game movie because a Ouija board movie would be very different than like Jumanji. I was about what, to what would say you call Jumanji. Ouija board? Is, would, that, is that a game? Yeah, is I that some, just, is a some... Ouija board would be a classic, identical, identical, identifiable. Um, you know what it is. What? Some white people sleepover shit. We should, yeah, we yeah. should do a Ouija yeah, board yeah. together yeah, sometime. We do it like a, uh, we could easily just make like a short Ouija board film and it's like a night or two. Yeah, no, we could. And it ends with like, <laughs> we have our nightmare hellscape. We, <laughs> we make like, and an, an Xfinity lobby. <laughs> um, but no, like, uh, it's in the same realm of like, because you know, there's Ouija board, there's witch board, there's Ouija. Two, this Ouija one, this Ouija. There's so, so many Ouija-ing. fucking movies based on this Ouija board oh, dude, thing. The fucking um, was it like the the Ouija prequel or something? Yes, that what? was actually better. Like we thought it was better when we saw yeah, it. Yeah, it was theaters, because yeah, right? we did. And oh. I think Ouija I know the this. beginning or the fuck Ouija Ouija back again. Uh, <laughs> Ouija back in action. Electric, <laughs> electric I, boogaloo. I think that one was much better than the first one because the first one was kind of like ass. And the prequel is like, hey, we're doing better. Because I think some prequels, if it's by like the same people, they actually like, learn a lot and they yeah. can actually do better. That's what I can see happening with yeah. uh, Talk to Me is like the prequel could be better. I'm, I'm pretty after, excited yeah. because I would like I'm, to see, I'm interested to see a little how bit more polished version of like their story or whatever. But um, yeah, I think, I think instead of doing... Because I think we talk about this all the time, Patrick, of like... Uh, instead of remaking movies, or instead of like, you know, oh, how do we make a new Jason movie? How do we make a new Friday 13th movie? Oh, fuck me. How do we make How do we make a new Freddy movie, or a new Leatherface movie? How do we make a new movie? Blah, blah, blah. It's like, why not try to make... I'm a new movie. A new movie. <laughs> so instead exactly. of making a original movie, idea, they, they made a new movie with a new gimmick, yeah. and I, I think that was pretty cool. I think yeah. they did pretty good, and we I did. think, I think again, the prop I like that hand I thing. I think it's yeah. pretty cool. Mm-hmm. So Great I think idea. I think kudos to them for staying within a realm of a fran- of like a movie trope that so many people know mm-hmm. and enjoy and enjoy, but not doing it again. Yep. So kudos to that. And I I wish more movies would do that where they're like, hey, you know what's a really good movie? Because for instance, there's 50 million shark movies that have all tried to emulate Jaws. And Jaws too, and like try not to well. Exactly what I'm saying. Not well, hmm. but they but they all want to do the the Jaws thing. They always like, oh, what's scary is there Jaws. I'm like, why don't you take the feeling of Jaws and you make a different movie? Which there's a few movies I would say because the feeling of Jaws I would classify it as a hunt and adventure horror. Yeah, and I think a couple movies that I feel like have done that style well, though it's not a hunt style, kind of the Mummy, and. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Also, Jurassic probably. Jurassic Park is a great mm-hmm. adventure horror, but yeah. it's also Spielberg. That's all. Yeah, okay. That's it. <laughs> well, I think I think we're wrapped up. I, I think we've talked about talk to me. So, uh, uh, thanks for listening, guys. I've been your host, the writer and director of a new movie coming out called The Whaler, starring Patrick Kujula and Ryan. Rue. I'm in there. And Josh Vincent does some shit. He helps me out. I'm use a camera. He's gonna use the camera. <laughs> First time yeah. in his life. That's what I'm gonna hear behind the cameras. Just, just. <laughs> um, sitting next to me is the whaler himself. Oh, 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 oh. Patrick! The sealer! Yeah, the sealer! Oh my god, these ones are like cal- calking, like a calking guy just sealing. You get sealed! You got a butthole, not anymore! <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, not again. And uh, sitting across from me, starring in The Whaler as a... Uh, uh, I'm not going to tell you what he's doing. Just a dude, yeah, apparently. Just, just a dude who owns a boat. He's just a man. I'm Ryan. Well, you own a boat? Yeah. Yeah. In The Whaler, you know. Oh, are you jealous? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> even the... Spoilers! <laughs> Jesus! And sitting next to me yeah. again, but the opposite side of The Whaler, um, assistant cameraman director... And he's also got new shit coming out, so stay tuned for that new shit. Yeah, 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 yeah he's gotta gonna announce that, that shit stuff. when he gets Well, home. sorry! <laughs> what? Well, it was the hit movie Dread. I gotta start <gasps> showing it. I gotta <gasps> finish that thing. But yeah, I'm Josh. 
Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, unfortunately, this is going to be two parts because this is about 45 minutes. <laughs> Goddamn. So uh, this is the second part of Talk To Me. And stay tuned for more shit and more chud talk and more Halloween themed things. You what? fucking nerds. Uh, it's good stuff. Another F word. And like, um, comment, subscribe, please. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> All right. Have a oh, good night, y'all.